Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Got a 2019 Ford F350 with a 6.7 liter power stroke diesel. Today I'm going to be replacing the front and rear differential fluid or gear oil and also the transfer case fluid. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start on the rear end here. Uh, this truck has the Ford 10 and a half inch rear end. Um, you can tell right here it says Ford Motor Company. So these trucks came with either this axle or the uh, Dana axle and uh, those would say Dana right here on the cover. So you wanna make sure you buy the correct gear oil because the Ford 10 and a half inch ones, they take the 75W85 gear oil as where the Danas take the 75140 gear oil. And this particular axle here has the electronic locker. You can tell by that green plug right there. And then another way you can tell too is you got this axle tag here so it shows your gears, so this has 355 gears. And then right down here on the bottom right hand corner, it says ELD, which stands for Electronic Locking Differential. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this fill plug out of here, because you always wanna make sure you can get that off first. And uh, then we'll start pulling these uh, bolts here. And you wanna make sure you got a 12.13 millimeter socket before you do this job, because that's what these uh, bolts are here. I think the Danas are the normal six point socket, but. So let me go ahead and grab a uh, 3 8 ratchet and we'll get this fill plug off. So go ahead and get yourself a drain pan because there may be some oil that leaks out of this when you pull this plug here. And let's go ahead and pull this. And then you can spec your cap here. You can see there's a little bit on there on the magnet, but not too much. Okay, so next I'll go ahead and uh, start pulling all these bolts here. Probably start out with these lower ones here and see if it'll maybe drain a little bit. And then we can work on the top ones there. And then hopefully this cover will come off easily. So go ahead and uh, start pulling these. And you can see pulling that bottom one actually pretty much drains it on its own. So I'll keep pulling them. All right, so I'll go ahead and let that drain a little bit more here. I suppose if you wanted to, um, I didn't know that was kind of a drain there. Um, you may not have to pull all these out. You may just be able to just pull that one out, drain it, and then fill it. But I like to take the cover off anyways, just to inspect the gears uh, to see if they were getting hot or anything or if there's any uh, teeth missing or anything. So let me go ahead and let this drain a little bit more and then we'll pull this off. Okay, so now that that's pretty much done draining, let's see if we can get this cover off. If it won't pull off on you, I like to just take like a putty knife here, it's real thin, and I'll go in from the side here, and let's see if we can just kind of pry some of this gasket away here. Uh, you don't want to use, you can use a screwdriver, but you don't want to use too thick a one, and then you can gouge the axle and all that, so just this little putty knife works pretty good. And then uh, you can kind of just go in right here. See it kind of starting to separate there. Just kind of work it out of there. And then once you get some of those edges cut through, Let's see if we can just maybe pull this off here. It's kind of hard to get your hands in here. Let's see if I can pry with this a little bit here. You can 
can see that's on there pretty good. There we go. So once you get that broken free, go ahead and pull your cover off. And then what I like to do is uh, we'll have to clean all this up. If I stick my hand in here, and actually this one doesn't have a lip. So the Danas usually have like a little hole down here where you got a lot of excess gear oil that you can push out with your fingers, but this one does not, so. Okay, so here's our rear differential cover. And as you can see, you got a lot of uh, gasket material on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a razor. I'll get all this cleaned up as best as I can. And then I might actually use my die grinder as well. Uh, it's like a kind of a scotch Bright pad on here. And I'll go ahead and uh, grind all that off, uh, get it nice and smooth and cleaned up. And then I'll also wipe it out and blow it out and uh, use some brake cleaner as well to get all this off. Okay, so as you see, got this all cleaned up. And uh, you wanna make sure you get down in these little grooves here where the gasket maker likes to sit. Uh, you wanna make sure you get all that off of there. And uh, like I said, I just used a die grinder with a scotch Bright pad and uh, some brake cleaner and was able to get this all cleaned up. So before I go ahead and uh, put on our bead of gasket maker, let's go ahead and uh, get the differential housing all cleaned up. Okay, so I'll kind of do the same thing here. I don't know if I'll use my die grinder, but uh, just try and get all this off of here using a razor, you know, just scraping some of this off here and then uh, taking my brake clean and we'll get all this cleaned up as well. And then also, as you guys are scraping this, kind of go from the uh, inside to the out. That way you don't get a bunch of these uh, gasket maker down inside the uh, differential there. All right, so as you can see, got this all cleaned up best as it's gonna get. And uh, before we go ahead and put our cover on, go ahead and just inspect your gears. You don't wanna make sure you're not missing any uh, teeth are broken or anything. And then uh, make sure they're not like a bluish color, which means they were kind of overheating and uh, these ones still look perfect. So let's go ahead and uh, get our cover on here. All right, so next let's go ahead and put our gasket maker on. I'll just be using some, uh, it's pretty much just like Permatex Ultra Black here and uh, starting to run out. So hopefully I have enough for this. So I'll just go ahead and uh, go ahead and just put a bead all the way around here. And then we'll kind of spread it out a little bit after that. So just kind of like that. And then I like to just kind of spread this a little bit here, just so it's not so thick. And you saw when we were putting pulling it off how much Ford used originally, which was quite a bit as well. So I just like to smooth this out just a little bit here. Just something kind of like that. And let's go ahead and uh, stick this on the truck. Okay, so then go ahead and uh, make sure this oil's not leaking out of this hole here because you want this to set up correctly. So just make sure that's all cleaned out of there and there's no oil leaking out of that. And then let's go ahead and get the cover on here. Just make sure you got it lined up correctly. And let's go ahead and get it up on here. Careful of your gasket maker. We'll get it set into place. And then we'll get a few of these bolts started here. Something kind of like that. And then you'll have to hold it. Grab a few of these. And then with a couple started, should be able to let go. 
and let's go ahead and uh, start putting the rest of these in here and we'll get them snug. Now with all those snug, go ahead and grab your torque wrench and we'll torque these to 30 foot-pounds. Okay, so just like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and let this uh, rtv cure overnight uh they say it only takes a few hours but i'm just gonna let it cure overnight uh because i'm also waiting on the oil for this anyways so now i'll go ahead and uh, move on to the front axle here real quick okay so moving on to the front here and as you can see on this one you can see right there that says dana so this is a dana front axle so let's go ahead and uh we'll pull that uh, fill plug there and then we'll uh, do the same as we did the rear, take off all the uh, differential bolts there. So again, make sure you got your drip pan in case uh, oil comes out of here. And then grab your 3 8 Let's take out this fill plug. And you can see that one's clean. So then go ahead and uh, grab a 9 16 and we'll go ahead and uh, start pulling all these off of here. Now I'll do like I did on the rear, just kind of break these free first. All right guys, so I'm gonna do kind of the same thing I did in the rear with the uh, putty knife. So, like I said, I'll just kind of go in from the side here and let's just see if we can get behind the uh, cover here. And I already heard that one pop. So I think this one's gonna come off a lot easier. So let's see. Maybe. So I can stick this back in here. And just kind of pry. So you can see right there. Make sure your drip pan's here so you don't make a huge mess. And let's Actually, what I'm going to do is going to try and just pry with this, just to open the bottom here, just to let some of this drain before we pull it off. So if you can get in here and then just kind of pry the bottom here. There we go. Kind of like that. Get your cover off here. that out of the way so then let all that drain out and uh, this is what I was talking about earlier so you can stick your hand in here and then just kind of push out a lot of this old oil here from the bottom and then while I'm down here I'll go ahead and get the rest of this gasket maker off of here Get this all cleaned up and then we'll move on to the uh, cover so as you can see got that all cleaned up and all that gasket maker off of there so let's go ahead and uh, clean up the lid now 
So just like the rear, you can see, got a lot of gasket maker on this front one as well. So again, I'll go ahead and scrape this one off and then uh, we will uh, clean it up with some paper towels. Okay, so I got that one all cleaned up as well. So I'll go ahead and do the same thing. Take my gasket maker here and let's go ahead and spread a bead around here. So kind of like that. And then let's go ahead and just spread it just like the rear here. Kind of like that. Let's go ahead and stick it on the truck. All right, so grab your cover and let's go ahead and uh, stick this on up in there just like the rear. We'll get it set into place and then uh, grab a few bolts, get them started, and then we'll get them snug and torque the rest of them. Carefully get that up here, get it set into place. Kind of like that. Grab a few bolts here. Okay, so once you get all started, let's go ahead and uh, just kind of go in a crisscross pattern. Uh, we'll get them snug and then we'll do the final torque. And then just like the rear, let's go ahead and uh, torque those to 30 foot pounds. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and let that sit overnight, let that RTV gasket maker set up, and then uh, we'll go ahead and fill the front and rear tomorrow, and then I'll also do the uh, transfer case. Okay, so now we can move on to the uh, transfer case, and um, you can see you got your fill plug and then your drain plug, but then we got this uh, little shield here, and if we drain it, it's going to make a huge mess. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this shield here, and then on each side, you'll have two 13 millimeter bolts holding that shield on, so let's go ahead and remove those. And then same thing on this side, the passenger side. And then I just took a jack stand to kind of hold it there since I'm the only one out here. And then you should be able to just get this out of the way here. And then have your uh, drain pan ready here. And let's go ahead and pull the fill plug first. Always wanna make sure you can pull that off first. And then go ahead and pull your drain plug here. Go ahead and let that drain. All right, so once that gets down to just a drip, go ahead and replace your uh, drain plug here. And tighten that up. All 
All right, so now we can go ahead and begin filling. And what I'll be using is the Mercon LV ATF fluid. And then I got this little gallon size pump, which I'll put up in here. And that'll make it easier to uh, pump up into the transfer case here. And then we'll go, we'll start pumping it until it starts flowing out of the uh, fill plug here. All right, so make sure you got your drip pan under there. So once this does start coming out, so we'll go ahead and stick that up in there. And then go ahead and start pumping. So right there, you can see it flowing out. Let's go ahead and pull this out. And then we'll just let that get down to a steady drip there. Okay, so once it gets down to just a drip like that, I just like to make sure, so just take an Allen key here, stick it down in there, and then check your level. And you can see we're right there. So we're good there. So then go ahead and uh, replace your fill plug here. Tighten that up. that up and, and then I like to uh, just hit that with some brake clean real quick here next go ahead and get your uh, skid plate back on here Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, start filling the front axle here. And what I'll be using is Motorcraft ADW90. Just get this off Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. And then I got three quarts of this. And uh, again, we'll go ahead and start filling until it starts running out of the fill plug there. And then we'll let it get down to a, just a drip. And we should be good. And uh, these have the uh, caps where you can just cut it off there a little bit. And then you can stick it straight into the fill plug there. Just go ahead and let that drain down in there. Here's our second quart. And then this is the third quart. All right, guys, so as you saw, used all three of those quarts. Uh, this calls for like 5.9 pints, which is equal to 2.95 quarts. So right at three quarts. Um, so let's go ahead and just check the level with our Allen. So you just stick that down in there. And then as you can see, we are right, right there. So we are uh, right at the fill plug. Just check one more time and then yeah as you can see so we are spot on so let's go ahead and uh, stick our fill plug back in and go ahead and tighten that up that with some uh, brake clean okay so I got the gear oil for the rear axle here um, so this is what I'll be using uh, I got this from O'Reilly's it's the Redline 7585 and uh, the guy I'm doing this for originally bought uh, four quarts of this 75 140 
because he wasn't sure on the axle. And then when I got to looking at the axle here, he does have the 10 and a half inch, which uh, has the electric locker. Again, that's by that green plug over there. Or you can uh, look at your four wheel drive knob there. And if you can pull it, then you have the locker as well. And you'll need to use the 7585. And then since this does have the electronic locker and is taking the 7585, you do not need to add the friction modifier to this. So I'll go ahead and put a link in the description for the motorcraft of this it was what he originally wanted to use, but uh, we had to settle for this since it was the only place that had it in stock. And then we got four quarts of this. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll start adding it to that. And uh, as you can tell, it's kind of hard and this won't fit even with the cap off. Uh, it does not fit inside the axle here, so it's just going to make a mess. So what I'll be using is this quart size pump. And uh, again, this won't fit onto this because it's such a small lid. So I'm just going to have to set it in there and then I'll just pump it from there. So let's go ahead and uh, start filling that. And I think this is like three and a half quarts or so. Uh, but we'll just keep filling it until it starts flowing out. And then uh, check the level here. Alright guys, so as you can see, it's starting to kind of drip out of there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull this out of here. And uh, this method does take a while. Your hands will get tired pumping this out of here. But uh, it's probably the best method to use. That way you don't have any of this leaking out everywhere. Because this gear oil is expensive and you don't want to waste it. Because I believe this is a little over 20 bucks a quart for this stuff. So... Just take your time pumping that in there. And uh, let me go grab my Allen key and we'll uh, check that level. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, check our level here. Take our Allen key here, just set it in there. And as you can see, we are right there. Try not to drip here, but right at the uh, top there. So again, let's just check it one more time. But that should be perfect right there. And then, yeah, you can see it right at the top there. And uh, I just double checked and it's uh, 7.5 pints, which is equal to 3.75 quarts, which is pretty much what we put in here. So I'm gonna call that good. So go ahead and uh, grab your fill plug here. Make sure you get it all cleaned up here, the magnet on there. And let's go ahead and put that back in there. And then tighten that up. And of course, again, to spray it with some brake cleaner and we should be good. Okay, so that's gonna do it for the video. Again, this was a 2019 Ford F350 with a 6.7 liter power stroke diesel. Went and replaced the rear and front differential gear oil along with the transfer case fluid. And again, if you guys are gonna do this job, make sure you check on that rear axle uh, to see what you have first before you go ahead and buy the uh, gear oil for it so hopefully this video helps you out 
Uh, if it does, why don't you give it a like, subscribe to my channel, check out all my other videos, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.